You're watching Global Toronto. This is Global News at Noon. Uh, we expect that the president will sign something by the end of the week, uh, and there are potential carve-outs for Mexico and Canada based on national security uh, and possibly other countries as well uh, based on that. Well, some potential hope on the horizon. The White House hinting that Canada may get an exemption from the tariffs that Donald Trump wants to impose on steel and aluminum imports. Good morning, I'm Jeff MacArthur, and for more on this, we are joined now by Unifor President Jerry Dias. Uh, Jerry, good to see you, and good morning. Good morning. All right, as you just heard there, the U.S. saying that there may be a carve-out for Canada when it comes to these tariffs on steel and aluminum. Are you optimistic that that will happen? Well, I'm optimistic, but trying to predict what this president is going to do is a fool's game, so we'll wait till the formal announcement. But a complete exemption is absolutely welcome and necessary to avoid any sort of economic carnage here in Canada and in the United States. But if it's a 30-day exemption, that buys us a little bit of time. But bottom line is we need a complete carve-out. Okay, well, let's talk a bit about that. You say economic carnage. If this tariff does indeed go through, if there is no carve-out for Canada, what does that mean for Canadian business and for the Canadian economy? Well, the, the economists are saying it's about a $3 billion a year hit. I know, for example, Ford and General Motors uh, met with the White House to say this would cost them a billion dollars each a year in profitability. So you would look at, you know, if there's 20,000 steel workers impacted, 10,000 workers in the aluminum sector, and then, of course, all the spin-off jobs, auto jobs, aerospace, auto parts. I can start to walk right through them. So this would be a severe economic hit for Canada, but also an economic hit for the United States. Okay, well, I wanted to ask you about that, Jerry, because you've been involved in the NAFTA renegotiations. And is that, what, is that what is going on behind the scenes right now? Are we trying to reason with the Trump administration and say that these tariffs could hurt you as much as it hurts Canada and or Mexico? Well, there's no question. The Canadian government, I give them credit, have been on a full court press uh, since the announcements of potential tariffs. But if Trump is using this as leverage, then he's really pushing his luck because people aren't going to fold uh, to the extent that he actually wishes that they will. Look, you can't blackmail Canada or any other nation into carving a bad deal or agreeing to you know, foolish proposals that the U.S. has on the table for the renegotiation of NAFTA. I hope the United States says that the, uh, that the, uh, the tariff exemptions will last as long as NAFTA renegotiations are going on because NAFTA renegotiations, I guess, are probably going to last a couple more years at least. Okay. Listen, you call this black Blackmail, but I also wanted to ask you, because you've been through thousands of negotiations, of course, in your career, and uh, what is your take on Trump and this tariff threat? Do you think that it's smart negotiating? Is he simply using what leverage he's got, or do you believe that this is bad faith? Well, I think he was using it as leverage. The problem he has is you have 107 U.S. Republican senators sending him a letter of questioning his ability to truly govern. You've got all the major corporations outside of the steel company saying that it's foolish, it's a foolish economic game. So, you know, he floats trial balloons, but also people are th truly questioning if he knows what he's doing. You get uh, Gary Cohn, his senior economic policy advisor, resigned saying, listen, this is, this is over the top. So, you know, it may have been a strategy uh, to gain leverage in the NAFTA renegotiations, but I think people are exposing him of having incredibly foolish policies. All right, speaking of strategy, if the tariff does indeed go through, what would your advice be to the Canadian government? How should they respond? First of all, they have to fight fire with fire. The United States, since the beginning of NAFTA talks, have came after softwood lumber, paper, our aerospace sector, steel, aluminum. So look, we're dealing with an administration that doesn't want a deal, so A, I would fight fire with fire, I would slap tariffs on the United States, even though that's not the preferred route, but B, I'd walk away from NAFTA because they have too many poison pills on the table that Canada can never accept. So either they're, they want to engage in meaningful dialogue or they don't. Mm -hmm. And it's clear to me that they don't, so I would just walk away and stop wasting everybody's time, frankly. All right, just finally, you've been at the negotiating table there. It's seven rounds of renegotiations we've gone right. through for uh, NAFTA. How would you rate our uh, government and uh, their response, uh, their negotiations? As well, far? on NAFTA, the, our government has been incredibly principled. Uh, their, their proposals on labor standards, the positions they've taken to protect the most important industries in Canada have been first rate. So that's why in my opinion, NAFTA isn't going anywhere. Donald Trump wants a complete victory, and nobody in Canada is willing to throw him a celebration party. All right. Jerry Dias, president of Unifor. Jerry, appreciate the perspective and the time. It's always good to see you. Have a great day. Thank you.